Yes, it's the Pace Setter segment. Now, today we are going to be looking at uh, startups, the startups ecosystem in Nigeria. We're going to be having that conversation. And to join us in this, we are joined right now by Dr. Samuel Jackson, who is, a, who is an MS. ME trainer. He also is a FALA, a Future Africa Leaders Awards winner and of course an ambassador of that foundation. And he is here. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, before we begin, we should uh, give honor to whom mm -hmm. honor is due. You must have heard me call him Dr. Samuel Jackson. That's right, because he has just been conferred with an honorary doctorate degree from the Miles Leadership University as a doctor of learning and and development. Congratulations. Thank you so we much. are extremely proud of you. I, I, I mean, talking about leadership, you, you have been in the, in the fray, you've been in the trenches about leadership. And one of the issues of, and, you know, African countries is the dearth of, you know, exemplary leadership. How critical is it even in these climes when we talk about people to our economy, economy? How critical we talk about, you know, uh, we not being achieved uh, targets, you know, and trying to assert ourselves as a continent. How critical is leadership in this scheme of things? Really, really um, critical. If you look at Africa in, in our own perspective, we have everything. And when you see our, the curriculum, our school educational curriculum, how do you bridge the, the two? Are we, are we really positioned? to actually churn out the kind of leaders that we have. Mm. I, I, it's a concern because our schools are designed for the one plus one. Mm. Our schools, have, our curriculum have not really been designed to churn out young people with leadership qualities. Um, even when your kids come home with assignments, all you just want to crack is one qualitative analysis um, that does not have a problem statement. I mean, just to interject, okay. I mean, recently okay. you saw the Mesoma issue, the Mesoma issue That's where the one. school, um, you know, um, her, her, her results, where she found out she actually f framed the results, you know, you know uh, fraudulently at the end of the day, a young girl like that at 17. So one has said, I mean, a lot of said some, one side of the story is that some say persecutes her, others say, what examples has she had? We've had our leadership, those in leadership po in politics today, controversially, you know, controversies on and on with their results, with their, you know, their, you know, their, their history and all of that. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, a, so it's a culture, you know, it's a culture challenge. Our young people have learned leadership the wrong way. A 16-year-old wants to have 100 million um, now because someone, there's someone he sees. So we have the wrong role models now in our society and it's really a challenge. And that's why the school system have a lot to do um, to bring about that cultural discipline in our young people. It's, it's, we have civics in the curriculum. It's been taught like a normal um, one plus one, not really, really driven. It's taught to be passed. And not, we have civic education in our school. So our young people have the wrong mindset. There's a role model they, they look at and they want to follow. So leadership is a huge, big challenge. And that's why um, the NGO civil society groups are redefining it and churning out programs that will make young people begin to see leadership uh, different. So I don't have to be a class prefect before I act. So leadership is no longer about position. Mm. You know, leadership is... Um, taking responsibilities um, where you have. And you see that done in foreign universities. Um, you, see it, you see it embedded in their curriculum. So there's still a whole lot of work to do, and I teach us to really need to be role models. But I'd like us to get back to, um, you know, the focus of our discussion too, which, by the way, is where leadership also comes very much to the fore. We're looking at startups in Nigeria. Um, the conversation of the startups ecosystem that there's an ecosystem you know yes. there is a, a, a certain space um, and we're looking at that space how it has been evolving and um, how it has been growing what have been the major challenges and perhaps even the the, the role of leadership within that particular ecosystem but um so so let's get on with that what when it comes to that space right what, what are the major things what are the basic things that people need to understand or they need to have the knowledge 
about, talking yeah. about small businesses, uh, micro, small, medium enterprise, what should be the basic knowledge? All right. So the, the MSME, we call it the MSME, yeah. the, the, the medium, micro, small enterprise. In fact, we now have the nano. Um, so it's the market women, yes. the, the tailor, like I had a training with addresses for two weeks, um, helping them design their business. It was okay. so amazing. You know, these are some, some of them, the highest level of education they've ever had were primary school, okay. you know, helping them define. So the MSM ecosystem is very, very important. We have over 36 million of them in Nigeria. Wow. And our GDP alone in Nigeria by 46% is being gotten by this set of guys. So some of them enter into the business. You can enter the economy anyway. You can enter the economy by nine to five job you do. You can enter the economy by being self-employed. You can enter the economy by starting up an enterprise. So it's very um, important that our startups who come into business understand basic key things like market research. You know, very, very important. Something happened. I had a Market friend. Research, research, that sounds something that is above, you know, a lot of the heads of people. When say okay. market, I, I didn't go to okay. school. <laughs> you know, how does the average market woman go into market research? All right. So I want to go into a business. Yeah. So who are my target customers? Okay. Do they have a propensity to buy? Okay. That part. Good question. Propensity to buy. Is there a market readily available for, for it? Your, for Let me tell you a funny joke. A friend of mine got some fishes, very nice fishes, beautiful. She told me, ah, Jackson, if I give you this, you sell this, you make this. Fish is beautiful. I put it up on my status. Dry fish. The first person was like, give him back his phone. You are a thief on my status. And they were telling, they were reporting me to tell. So apparently, I should not sell a fish. I can't sell. Nobody will buy it from you. because I do not look like, like a, fish a fish seller <laughs> who wanted to make Good money. Question. So I don't have a market. Mm. And, and that's that right. Some persons go into business wrongly. So, so they you, you to... can't even enter as a broker. <laughs> no one will really? buy. <laughs> <laughs> so because... some persons enter into business wrongly. Oh, it's fish farming now. And then the whole attention is there. Brrr, somebody heard, ah, when you do fish farming, there's money, the silly, the... and then they, they put in money and then they, they, they fall. And it's really been a big challenge. One of the, one of the things we've seen about MSMEs are that access to market, access to market, two major things, access to finance, access to market. But surveys that have been done, it is actually access to market. So they have the product but they can't sell. How are they not able to sell? Branding, you know, branding, very, very critical. Um, uh, packaging of the goods too, very, very critical. Yeah. And, and, and there are opportunities, opportunities for the startups of every, in renewable energy, a lot of rural communities are in education. talked about education. Yeah. Now, some parents want, um, um, solutions that will help their children study from home. So why can't you start a tutorial center? Tech, you know, fintechs are there, you know, solutions that could allow pair to pair. Like in Kenya, uh, in Pesa, I don't know if you're also aware of yeah. Pesa, how it has made banking so easy, you know. Uh, it, the it, version of Flutterwave. Yes, version of Flutterwave. So there are a whole lot of opportunities and 200 million Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Huge, big market you can sell for every kind. Boy, I'm girl, excited. Man, and I'm sure Nigerians woman. are excited right now. But let's not, uh, uh, let's not uh, attempt to paste, paint a false uh, you know, impression of actually what the reality is on ground. Okay. Many people have talked about um, small businesses and an enabling environment for them to thrive. Yeah, we know, it's, you know the opportunities are there. But it's, it, it goes beyond criticizing government. How can we help government to help us? Uh, um, to, um, a lot of people have complained about the impact of the fuel subsidy removal and um, the rent, the, the tax regime, this new administration. Do you think that has an adverse effect? On it, the, just, can you explain yes, how that has impacted so far? Because we, we need, government needs to understand 
how its policies are affecting this critical sector. We know the real sector is the life YIZ engine room of any yeah. economy. So yes, in, in lots of ways, like like I still go back to people's propensity to buy. Um, some products people do not have access to to even getting the product because production bread for example um you had the news that bread the prices of bread will increase will by um 15 percent um so that means the price of bread will go up so um people will start looking for alternative maybe Zoe will want to start baking our bread in the house you know, buy yeah, flour and keep in the house, uh, and, 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 and rather than go buy um, some set of bread. So the the like we saw the cash cash crunch, a lot of business crumbled. Um, so go, government policies to affect a lot of business, but but like we always tell MSMEs, you should also find a way to reject the business, maybe um, look into um, the costing of your price, reduce costing. One of the things that high major challenge for MSMEs are the cost of running the business. Um, yeah. um, in our programs, we teach them how at some point you need to reduce staffing. You don't reduce quality um, and find ways around it. Government are aware. And then they are also putting in measures to help MSMEs grow. There are grants available. Um, they do not have this information. Do you information. want to talk more about those grants? Because oh. a lot of Nigerians don't know anything about it. Oh, yes. Like, we just finished a program for some MSMEs who wants to scale. So we have different. So those who want to scale, like those who have been in business for three years, they are CAC certified and wants to scale. Scale, I have one plant. I want to increase my production. I need two plants. I have three staff. I want to increase production. I need five staff. There are fundings available by government, by loan. The Bank of Industry have single-digit loan. Um, um, the Lagos State itself, LSCTF, Lagos State Employment Trust Fund have um, funding access. I'm also aware of um, Sterling Bank. In fact, we got um, about five MSMEs had 200 million in promissory notes um, when we helped them pitch. So we brought Bank of Industry, we brought the, LA, we brought the LSCTF, and Smeden. Now, Smeden is a small, medium enterprise development agency of Nigeria. They regulate all of the SMEs in Nigeria. With the new policy coming out with the uh, Tinubu government, we are hoping that Smeden and Bank of Industry will be merged. Uh, so that MSMEs um, can thrive through. Um, so they need the service of a BDSP. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the federal government is trying to regulate that. Just like a doctor, you are sick, you go to the doctor, a lawyer, you need legal, you go to a lawyer. Now services of BDSPs are now going to be licensed in Nigeria. So as a, BD, as a business owner, you need guidelines, you go to a BDSP. And two bodies in the entire Nigeria um, license that has the Lagos Business School and the Cardinal Business School. I just got um, license as a BDSB with the Lagos Business School and the Sweden. Um, so they need information. And that's why opportunities, some like Faith Foundation, there are a lot of, a lot of SME trainings are on now because we have more people coming. There's a lot of disruption. What, one of my, uh, one of the people at Kozofo has a tea, a tea that cures cancer. Just a lip, a tea. And it's been tested by NAFDAC. It's been, it has gone through sun, you know, and it's thriving. It's, it's thriving. She just received um, 20 million um, from BOI. So they need to well package. You need to teach them how to pitch. Um, so the, the ones suffering probably have not received help from a BDSP, but there are, like I said, government has grants, opportunities for MSMEs, including space. Um, uh, incubators? Kind yes, of. incubators, yes, kind of. Um, um, Sterling Bank also have incubating space too where you can maybe you want to run a business you don't have an office you do that i call what for giz uh, german government in nigeria and then we even have a website you have a business you don't have a website you create a website for you yeah. and then your products are there 
And then somebody so I want to assess, and then you give them a link, they pay the access to business. So information is another thing for some MSMEs who do not know, and it looks like they are suffering. So government, the startup hacks is there, and most of the content in that startup app is how to enable MSMEs to build their capacity. Yeah. They need to build. Some just entered business because they entered yes. business. They don't even have a business okay. plan. I, I, I want to kind of uh, follow up on, on what you just said. I'm looking at, we're looking at the startups ecosystem or the small businesses uh, ecosystem. And I'm looking at longevity, mm -hmm. you know, um, because a lot of times it is not so much about the support that these small businesses are being given. A lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, the success of these businesses also, to a large extent, depends on the mindset of, of the people. So I kind of wanted you to touch on that. What kind of mindset do they need to have? We're seeing some businesses after about three years, five years, they have to fold. And they would tell you they don't have this, they don't have that, they don't have that. But some others in the same space and maybe with the same challenges just sort of finds a way to push through. And who knows, you know, eventually we see some of those small businesses becoming companies and even multilateral, you know, corporations and all I of think that. So to do with, uh, training, right? Yeah, so yeah. training. So, so why, why did you go into the business? That's another question. Uh, some of the business we are consulting for, we ask, what's your vision? You know, like, should I have a vision? You know, so they t they tell you that yes. in response. Yes, response, and that goes into your business plan, the vision, yes, should I and have mission a vision. So there's no plan. So it was failed ab initio, right from Ever the beginning. So we come into a point. Uh, we BDS is coming to a point of their life where you know you're crossing an express, and then you're at the middle, the cars phone. <laughs> Cars at the back, boom. Should I run back? Back or go forward? Or go forward. Go forward. So some opportunity to meet some of us at that point where we now look at, there are times you need to go back. Like it's been faulty. Foundations is faulty, right? Jig. Yes, it's been faulty. And there are sometimes like, okay, let's see how we can move you to the other end. Some don't even have a mission. So, um, and that's why we help them prepare what we'll call business model canvas. Oh, very important. If you start a business and you have a business model canvas, What's it that? helps. So the business model canvas is like a block, nine block. Um, it's like a vision statement. Uh -huh. You just look at it. You can see the future of your business. The blogs have who are your networks? Who do you need to help you drive through the business? What model of funding? How do you... If this is my business, I should make more money from it and not just one aspect. So the nine blocks of the business model Canva gives you a pictorial view of the future of the business. So who are my networks? Um, how do I reach my customer? Um, in fact, it helps with business sustainability. So in the terms of crash crunch, what plans do, do I have? to continue that business. That business continuity is very key for businesses. Um, crash grants of business collapse. Now that's that's different from your SWOT analysis, right? It's different from the SWOT analysis. Uh, the, the SWOT, the, the, that's another <laughs> area. Yeah, that's <laughs> area. But the business model canvas helps you now enter into your business plan. From mm -hmm. your business plan, then you cannot have what we call the growth plan. But before you get to the growth plan, you must have tried for like three good years before uh -huh. you can think of even growing. I, I know when I was doing uh, the course in business uh, planning, we talked about the five-year cash flow, cash flow plan. That was the most difficult thing I've ever experienced and because and and you have to, very when, easy. when you pass that hurdle, then you know you're serious about because you can actually, it's like, it's a faith walk. You must be able to see your business five years after. Where will you be and how do you intend to get to there? Get yeah, like how much do you how much are you planning to make? And so you ask like, an MSME, what's yeah. your target sales for the year? It's like target sales. What is target sales? Like I should have a target for a year? No, I say come at the said they go. It was like no, no. So so that's why um, they do not last. So mm -hmm. issues come and then they crumble, they want to fold up and then they fold up. And then the one who are privileged to have those ideas, you know, um, those trainings, those backing, 
are able to stay through because at the end of the day the business was for a purpose yes was for, was to yes. meet a need you know yeah I, do those do those trainings um include or maybe involve like um the value chain of the entire uh, business maybe where you are on the value chain and how your business maybe relates to someone else on that value definitely. chain definitely yes so we also have audits business audit you audit your business where you are to check if you're crumbling and because we, you might be deceived to think you're making profits right ah, we, because of your your you know you're so, getting cash but the long what, run, what, you, what, you calculate depreciation you, maybe what, on your, your notes. one of our skill training <laughs> yeah. first day this lady was Second oh, day, fire. then third day, ah, she was down. But she's doing well. So what happened? I said, no, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, look at my business. You know, so some could be deceived by maybe number of followers they have on their social media page. And it's, it's, there's no break even in what is coming in and what is going out. There's no break even. And the, especially financial management, that part is a it's, major it's challenge tough. for MSMEs. As you okay, come, okay. you are just putting. Okay, a, sir. Because of that statement you yeah, made, financial financial up, management, right? uh, the issue of um, because we run an import-based economy, you, whatever money you earn, it should be. Are you supposed to be seeing it in terms of foreign exchange? What's the, what's the equivalent? Because you're going to buy your inputs in, in, in. So if you think you're making profit with this money you're making on the international markets, you are, you are, you are not making any profit. So uh, should people re reframe their mind to, to cost their business in, for, in, in maybe in dollars or so, so that they can stay above the, you know, they can stay afloat? Mm -hmm. so, 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 so let's not also, yeah. the, the, there are still the low, so we don't bring them into yeah, that yeah, forex yeah, yeah. part, but you should be able to know how much comes in and how much goes out and then manage your income well. In fact, we also advise you do third party. Um, so you run a business, but you don't have power over financial spending okay. you give a third party power it's your money but you give a third party power to approve any kind of spending and that's why we help some of them there are a lot of institutions that help you okay. with that okay. so you don't just withdraw and withdraw but there are a whole lot of opportunities for them the market is big and all our startups um, opportunities for them to keep getting better okay so please our last question the, um very because um, there's a debate, ongoing debate now, government is talking of palliatives for Nigerians. And especially, it's, it's, uh, how would you advise government that 500 billion naira that it's planning to disperse 8,000 naira every month to every Nigerian for six months? What would be the best way to, to actually use that money if you're going to stimulate the economy? Ah, so if they, if it's, so, so let's define, they said they want to give poor people. Mm -hmm. So... 8,000 naira to you is um, it's too small. Okay. Uh, but there, there are some persons that 8,000 naira is a lot for. Is a, is a lot for. Um, so, so, so however, th th there are part of the money that is also for the MSME space. Okay. 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 So they could offer loan um, or, or, or not loan. A lot of MSMEs don't like loan. That because of that repayment, they prefer grants. So they could bring up palliatives. The cost that of could, money now. Yes, bring up palliatives that, that will help. That will help. But if there are poor people per se in those local communities, eight thousand is some, some millions to them. Uh, I would love them to put those monies also on infrastructures. Um, electricity is a major challenge for a lot of businesses. Um, offer facility grants you know, for a lot of um, persons. Um, so that um, the, the challenge a lot of MSMEs are facing, especially at this time, will be, will be reduced. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. We had this conversation this morning uh, on the startups ecosystem in Nigeria. And we did have the pleasure of talking with Dr. Samuel Jackson, MSME trainer and Fala winner, Fala award winner. 2014. Thank you very much for coming. I know this discussion isn't over and perhaps mm -hmm. there will be opportunity. I know there will be yes, to discuss will. this on Thank other you, platforms. Thank you so much. Once again, congratulations. <laughs>